Hey you guys, it's Lacey, and today I wanted to talk to you about steam. So one of the most difficult things in the game is running out of water. Whenever you run out of water, you pretty much die. And whenever you run out of sand, which is only found in the starting biome, you can't filter your water anymore. So what are you supposed to do? You can boil your water. Okay, so I'm gonna show you several ways you can do that. So here I have some contaminated water that's coming into contact with what used to be magma, but is now igneous rock because it's cooled off some. You see, it's plenty hot enough still to make some water boil and it's making steam. If the water is not in contact with air, it won't make steam. So sometimes it condenses in here. It's essentially raining in here in some spots and it will create a layer where it can't create steam. Whenever contaminated water boils and makes steam, it leaves behind dirt. I have this gas pump and it is pumping the steam in a insulated gas pipe up, 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 up to thermoregulators, which are only running part of the time right now, but they cool the steam. When the steam's going into the thermoregulators, it's 96.8 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. When it comes out of the first one, it's 83.1. Out of the third one, it's 55. And then it goes up to 41, which is, you know, reasonable. The magma is so hot, it's gonna heat up everything. Um, so here I built this barrier to try to keep out some of the heat. It doesn't work super great as you can see, but this was already pretty hot when I decided to build it. And to protect my plants, I've also built this little bit here. And this is where the steam actually comes out and condenses. So in here it's condensing. You'll see some of it was condensing already whenever I had was building these tiles. So there's water behind them. But as the steam comes in here and condenses, the water gets pumped out. But you wanna make sure you insulate where the heat comes out and use insulated pipes um, to maintain temperature and protect the rest of the area from the heat because the heat will kill your plants. So you might wanna do this away from your plants as well. So you can also use batteries to make your steam. Here we have a liquid vent that's connected to a pipe that is pumping in contaminated water. It is set to the lowest possible flow rate with this valve. Any more and it doesn't really work well. Um, there's so little water that you can't really see it, but it is here. So there is 34.8 grams of water here and it's 225 degrees Celsius. And it's touching the air, so it's making steam, which you can see through here. And that steam is being pumped out by this pump and these pumps as well into these thermoregulators to be cooled again and out down to our room. So it goes across like this with these gas permeable tiles because the water won't go through them, but then it hits this one and it's meshed so it can go down through to the next row of batteries because it gets hotter as you go along. So 250, 260, 280, 290, so it just as it goes across here, it gets hotter. And with the flow rate set so low, you don't flood your batteries or your buildings. Also make sure you insulate this well because it's really warm in here um, and it will kill your plants once again. Don't kill your plants. You can also do this with a hydrogen generator. Here I have three electrolyzers and a gas pump above each and then gas pumps and each of them has a gas filter attached to them. It's very complicated, but I have so much oxygen, I don't know what to do with it, and I've ended up pumping it out here. Um, but this is the only way that I can keep my hydrogen generator going, like, constantly. Um, and with my hydrogen generator going constantly, I can make steam. 
if I drip water over it. See, originally I thought I was gonna hold the water in this little spot, so I had a block here. But instead I started dripping it with this valve set to as low as possible over the hydrogen generator. And it started getting hot instead of just sitting in one spot. And it wasn't getting it hot at all when it was sitting up here. The dripping is important. Like you have to drip and use a small amount. And see we have it making some steam here. But it's not as much as quickly as magma obviously. Here I have it going out through two thermoregulators and into this room where it condenses. Also with this one, since I'm only putting it through the two thermoregulators, it takes longer for it to condense because it has to come down to the right temperature. See the oxygen here is only 28, but there are places with steam that is still very hot, but the water slowly condenses in here. So you have more thermoregulators, then your water will condense more quickly. This is an example of what not to do to make steam. See how I have this thin layer of water? It never gets above 35 degrees Celsius. I don't know why, even if I make it just one little dot, never gets above 35 degrees Celsius. Even though the temperature in here is pretty warm, or it has been, the water sinks so much of the heat, you have to have the dripping and direct contact with the generators or the batteries. Remember how I told you earlier that I tried to just make a little dot here and hold it in this really warm room, which is, I mean, 150 degrees in the air. And it doesn't work. The water stays at 29 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time. I just left it to run. When I take this block away and add a flow regulator to make the drip speed all the way down to 10 grams a second, it starts working. So the dripping is important. Well, I hope this helps you with your race. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss me when I go live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern, or when I post a video. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Also, you are special and amazing, and thank you for being you. Love you guys. Bye.